coverage now of nature's nightmare, the twisters that plague the communities this evening. Cleanup has already begun in many suburbs, as you heard Dennis Stopper report, after at least two tornadoes touched down in Brooklyn Park and Eastward. We're showing you the pictures we captured again to remind us all of nature's fury, a fury that's left several thousand people without power and others wondering how to deal with the damage. Amazing looking stuff. Many people are wondering tonight why there weren't more warnings and why the storm could be seen before the sirens were sounded. Paul Douglas joins us right now with that story. Paul, what happened? Diana, Paul, it was a situation very reminiscent of the St. Anthony tornado a couple of years ago. Frankly, any moron can look at a radar screen and if there's a tornado in Buffalo, project eastward where it's going to be and when it's going to be. In this case, the tornado developed right over Brooklyn Park, meaning there was very little chance for warning. In fairness, we did issue a special statement at about 2 o'clock mentioning that there was a watch in effect for the western metro and in and near the watch area there was a potential for damaging winds and even a few small tornadoes. But uh, tornadoes are extremely fickle. In fairness to the weather service, you cannot predict a tornado ahead of time. Even with Doppler and all the fancy toys we have, it's pretty much a knee-jerk reaction. When spotters, Skywarn spotters, actually see a tornado, then they issue the warning. But it was a very dangerous situation this afternoon. It could have been a lot worse. This is what it looked like. At about 5 o'clock, we went on the air first, officially at about 8 minutes before 5 o'clock, after hearing reports on a police scanner in the newsroom, and we prefaced it as being an unconfirmed report of a tornado near Brooklyn Park. And then the Weather Service came on with a warning, an official warning, about 2 to 3 minutes later. You can see the classic hook shape to the tornado, and at the end of that arrow, right over Fridley, as you can see, that is where the tornado actually touched down. This is what Doppler looked like at the height of the storm, right around 5 o'clock this afternoon which brings up a couple of interesting questions. Are tornadoes becoming more common in the Twin Cities? And where is the most likely area for tornadoes in the Twin Cities metro area? You may be interested in this. These are all the tornado touchdowns since 1959. That yellow circle is today's touchdown in Brooklyn Park. These are the years. You can see the 65 outbreak in Fridley, the 84 tornado which uh, hit up in St. Anthony, and these are the path lengths. Now it looks rather confusing, but if you look at this statistically and ask yourself where is the greatest chance of being hit by a tornado, an interesting pattern emerges. There does seem to be a local tornado alley running across central Carver, central Hennepin, into parts of southern Anoka and northwestern Ramsey County. For some strange, bizarre, and frankly unexplained reason, there is a higher frequency of tornadoes in this corridor, and we just can't really figure out why. So again, why wasn't there more warning? Well, as it turns out, there was a watch for the Western Metro, but uh, tornadoes are just flukes of nature. They're too small and too brief to predict individually, and uh, it was, quite frankly, a knee-jerk reaction. I'm only very, very happy, Paul and Diana, that uh, the tornado hit a relatively unpopulated uh, area of land. That yeah. is a miracle. We're all thankful for that. Thank you. Thanks, Paul. Alrighty. Well, there's obviously nothing more frightening than seeing a funnel and a twister approach. Mary Stuckey joins us from the newsroom, and she visited tonight with many people who witnessed the tornado. Mary? Well, Paul and Diana, we have some amazing pictures to show you from some very brave, maybe you might say foolhardy people. Our News 11 photo crew obviously did a great job taking pictures of the twisters, but some amateurs were also out, and here are the pictures they took. This was the scene from the Peterson home in Spring Lake Park. Mike Peterson was taking these home movies of the tornado just blocks away. You can hear the roar. Sounds like a freight train. As his family headed for the basement, you can hear them begging Mike to come down with them. Let's get in. Really coming in across now. Let's get in. Come on. Come right straight forward. Wait a minute, Tiny. We're going to wait. Come on. we got to get downstairs. Not yet. At one point, Sky 11 flew into Peterson's shot. He's got to be dumber than we are. Hi, uh, News 11. This is uh, Gerald Mills and uh, Mike Peterson on your spot reporters. Then the funnel went back up. The Peterson house was spared. At about the same time, outside a Target store in Brooklyn Center, this was the scene as people stood outside to watch. These pictures were taken by a freelance camera crew. One came down and went up, another one yeah, came down weird. and they went up. It was neat. It was fascinating, but I don't want to be in one. <laughs> it was good enough for me to just stand by and watch. And I looked up and saw like a cone. The clouds were shaped like a cone and then all the clouds around him were going around in circles and the cone was getting bigger and it was... Pam Anderson was driving in Brooklyn Park when she looked up through her sunroof and saw a funnel cloud above her. There was people putting on the brakes, pulling over, getting on the road, slowing down, speeding up. They didn't know what to do. Dave Brevich was another person driving in Brooklyn Park when he saw the funnel, got out of his car, and he snapped some pictures of the tornado. 
I was just a little, little pumped up, you know. I wasn't really scared, but yet I was cautious. And uh, I, you know, they say it's supposed to go to the east, but it looked like it was following me up and down the road. <laughs> Luckily now, witnesses can laugh now that the danger is over. Paul and Diana, back to you. Yeah, we, it really is amazing that it wasn't worse. This okay. all can leave a very spectacular and frightening memory in the minds of the few people who see nature's nightmare firsthand. And earlier this evening, the sight of a tornado on live television from a helicopter is believed to have been a first. So on News 11 Extra, some of the sights and sounds of the severe storm that will be remembered many nights from now. As you can see, there is the tornado. It is indeed on the ground. You can see debris being tossed up, and we want to go live to Max Mesmer. Thousands of feet in the air. There are flash fires on all the uh, high-tension wires. We're about three-quarters of a mile from the actual touchdown at this time. This is really spectacular. Max Based on what you've seen, what do you estimate the damage to be in the Brooklyn Park area? I mean, yeah, obviously, this is causing touchdown, damage. Another touchdown. I'm going to have to leave this area here. The debris is drifting my way here. I'm this looks like a much more dangerous tornado. This could easily go on for another 15, 20, maybe even 30 or 40 minutes. There you saw another high-tension wire being hit. And ambulance crews are in the area and on the ground. They're there waiting just to see what injuries might develop. So far, we have no reports of injuries, but of course, there may and could be some. You can see that is unbelievable. Winds probably in excess of 200 miles an hour. Obviously, unless your house is tied down, it appears the tornado has actually slowed down almost yeah. to a creep. Uh, I can hear you five by five. Go right ahead. All right, Max. The question I have for you, have any buildings been damaged at this point? What have you seen? Uh, it is possible. However, I have not been able to uh, go out west to check that out. Right now, the tornado is located over a wooded area, and it is tearing up uh, trees, and uh, the, uh, it's ripping entire pine trees into the air thousands of feet. Ellen, you're in the newsroom? What we saw is we saw the clouds coming down from the sky. We saw the first one come down, then it went back up, and then we did see the one that did cause the damage in Brooklyn Center, and I believe this is the one right here. People always say it sounded like a freight train coming at me. Did you hear any noise associated quiet. with this? It was absolutely quiet, and there was very little wind here, and it was absolutely scary to see those trees flying, and I looked right at it through a break in our trees, and I thought it was coming right for the house. It looks very dark and ominous, and there's a lot of lightning, but I don't see a touchdown at this time. You see a funnel cloud at this point, Max? No, I do not. I do not see a funnel cloud. There's, a lot, there's lots of lightning, and it's, it's very dark, but I do not see a funnel cloud anywhere at this time. And finally tonight, to recap the latest on the tornado, about a dozen homes in the northern suburbs have been damaged by tonight's twisters, and hundreds of power customers are without power. NSP says it'll be working to restore power to all homes by tomorrow. And if anyone needs assistance tonight, you can call the Red Cross. That number again is 871-7676. Well, the weather has been foremost on everyone's minds this afternoon. What can we look forward to again for tomorrow? First off, I want to thank Max Mesmer one more time mm -hmm. for helping us out this afternoon and I want to thank everybody in the weather department for helping me out it was a uh, fly by the seat of the pants type operation but uh, I'm just grateful things worked out the way they did we want to check Doppler one more time show you some very heavy storms luckily not severe but heavy some of these storms could produce downpours and vivid lightning and possibly even small hail the heaviest activity right now from a uh, southwestern Stearns County to about Benson to Appleton to Ortonville more heavy weather up around Park Rapids and Wadena it's all moving east and there could still be a heavy thunderstorm at your house later tonight showers likely tomorrow morning take an umbrella for the Grand Ape parade tomorrow. It should brighten up in the afternoon and clear out late in the day tomorrow. Sunday looks beautiful, mostly sunny skies and a high of 81. Tom? Paul, I'll tell you, I've been in the business a few years. I've never seen anything like today. Unbelievable, the coverage of that tornado and the shots from the helicopter. The Twins beat Baltimore 7-3. That's good news. The Twins in Baltimore tomorrow. The Babe Ruth State Baseball Tournament continues in St. Paul. And we'll see everybody at the Aquatennial Parade tomorrow. And happy birthday to my dad, age 75, this week. <laughs> good for you, Tommy. And finally tonight, because of the special edition of News 11, Part 5 of Broken Arrows, Broken Dreams did not air. It will be seen tomorrow night on News 11 at 10.